Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Live Your Spa Life Show. Spa life is a lifestyle that accepts that accomplishment and harmony coexist. The spa and spa life, the SPA, is for seek power always, that power within you to do your deeper work in the world. I am so intrigued about our next guest, which is Angeline Hart, and she is a speaker, a relationship coach, the author of the Amazon bestseller, Gorillas Make Great Lovers. You heard me. Gorillas make great lovers, women who are successful in their careers, but yet frustrated in their personal relationships come to her for empowerment in attracting good men and building long-term relationships. Angeline, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Well, for those of you who are listening and maybe not watching, uh, she also has a, her husband next to her, Dixon, who is going to be, has a cameo performance here in our interview because they work together and he's going to be adding some insights as we go along. So Dixon, welcome to the show as well. Thank you. So let's just jump right in here because I want to talk about, you have this unique gorilla love system and you're helping women to shift their paradigm around women and how they are with their relationships, what they think of relationships. And so many women will say there aren't any great men out there. And, you know, you are trying to show people that there's actually magic in your process. And I'd love for you to share a little bit about um, one, how you came up with the title of your book and about this unique gorilla system that you have. Okay. So you mentioned that women have a hard time finding good men. And that's the number one complaint that I hear is I can't find any good men. Uh, when you go through this process, the gorilla love system, it actually opens women's eyes and they start seeing good men. I had a woman say to me a week after we'd done this process, she said, they're everywhere. And, and it is like magic because it is a shift in your own mind. It's a shift in how you see things. And to give an example, well, I'll, I'll start with you asked about the title of the book, Gorillas Make Great Lovers. What it's based on is a concept. I discovered there are 12 different types of men based on what drives them, what motivates them, what they do that makes them feel good about themselves. And for fun, not to make fun of them, but just for fun, I gave each of them an animal name and I called a group of them manimals. Now it happens that my favorite are the gorillas. And the gorillas are very masculine, uh, not that macho bragging kind of thing, but very comfortable in their own skin. Um, uh, they tend to be very tactile. They're cuddly kinds of guys. They are, um, easy going, the kind of guys that are going to have backyard barbecues and that, that kind of thing. And when I was single after my divorce, when I was single and out looking around, I was talking to some women about this program and Dixon heard me talking about it. And he said, but I'm not a gorilla. And I said, you're right. You're not a gorilla. <laughs> and he and I were already dating at that point. And um, so he said, well, then what am I? And that's when I started working on discovering the full 12 and not just the gorillas. Um, and what I am, shall I tell them? Or do yeah, you wanna, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a panther, ah. a panther. And, and this is an artistic soul. Uh, this uh, tends to be a uh, standoff as he wants to be off by himself some. Uh, but I've become over time what we would call a, uh, a hybrid. She loves gorillas so much that I've, I've uh, advanced my gorilla side. <laughs> and so now I'm a pantherilla. <laughs> nice. Well, that was actually one of my questions. Are people, uh, are, you know, are these men like, you know, once they have like a, an animal type, are they that for life or are there certain like life circumstances that shifted? Can they kind of adapt the characteristics of other ones? How's that work? Well, they, they retain the basic nature and you can literally Dixon and I, if we go into a group of uh, young kids, we'll be going, <laughs> baby gorilla right there. Okay. Oh my goodness. Look at this one, a little rhino. And, and you, they, the basic side is there, but every man is a mix of all these different things. What happens when you go through the gorilla love system is that then you start seeing men differently. And, and Dixon is a perfect example because when I met him, my first reaction was not my type, not interested. As I have developed, and it's what I share in the Gorilla Love System, as I've developed the ability to see beyond the surface and stop being blinded by my 
preferences, my typing, my patterns that are in my head. My dad's a gorilla, both my brothers are gorillas, my son is a gorilla. Gorillas are what I look for. And I have, have expanded my view, which has allowed me to see the value in all these other types of men. Panthers. Panthers, for instance. And so this is what happens for women when they go through the gorilla love system is they start seeing, oh, actually he's got some great qualities that I'm looking for that I like. I'll get, may I give you a story? Yeah. So I was working with a young woman. She's in her early 30s and she lived in Hollywood and she'd been an actress um, and she dated all the Hollywood types. Uh, you know, flashy and they've got it all together and they're worried about having the right car and dressing the right way and all that kind of stuff. And every guy that she dated betrayed her in some way, uh, cheated on her or uh, got really negative toward her or just she always ended up feeling less than and not good enough and was having a really hard time. When right. she and I talked, we realized, well, she already knew this, but I don't know that she knew the extent. Her father was extremely emotionally abusive to her just just almost to the point of bizarre and so she had carried unconsciously this pattern of i'm not good enough and that pattern creates energy in you and you magnetically are attracted and energetically are attracted to the pattern that's familiar your unconscious thinks that that's what's safe right. so she kept attracting the same type so would this be the wolves um, in her case, it was a lot of wolf, yes. Um, although wolf, I want to make sure that, that it's clear that every single type except crab and rat can have a wonderfully positive side if they're emotionally mature. If they're not emotionally mature, every one of them, well, probably even the gorillas, if they're emotionally immature, it could be cuddly, but right. not yeah, it could be so all there can be an, an upside and a downside to all of these types, right. depending yes. on the level of maturity, the uh, self-awareness, uh, how they carry yes. themselves. So they can actually grow into their, their best animal version. Absolutely. Right. Very well said. So okay. when we went through and we did a, a quiz system that helped her identify what she actually wanted instead of what she kind of had been trained to want, she realized that what she was actually interested in is what I call owls. And the owls are the intellectuals. They operate in their head. They're uh, doctors and lawyers and, and computer geeks. They're, they're uh, not into the physical self like the gorillas are tactical and cuddly. And she is a very intellectual woman, very well educated, very much interested in philosophy and discussions. And she's like, oh my heck, that's what I want. So she went back through some of the uh, online dating times when she would see someone and go, nope, not mine, not mine, not mine. And she said, I think maybe some of these could be actually owls. So she contacted some of them and one of them said, yeah, let's go out. And he invited her to go bowling. Now, previously bowling was not that flamboyant, nice, attractive, uh, sexy kind of activity. And she would have thought, okay, not interested in this guy and might even have broken the date. But she went out with him and went bowling and had a wonderful time. And they had great discussions during the evening as they're bowling and went out for dinner afterwards. And she said to me, I, I was totally blind to what I actually want. This is what happens in the paradigm shift in their mind when they go through the gorilla love system is they become open to what's around them. I, I can actually tell you another fun story about right. the same kind of well, thing. Well, before you do that, I would, I would love that, um, is I'd love to hear a little bit more about you and your own journey. You know, you've had uh, a previous marriage. Um, mm -hmm. I have as well. A lot of my friends call that our practice marriages. Yes. Um, and those are things that we get to, to learn from. And, you know, you've been with Dixon now for 28 years. Yes. And what would you say has been the transition or the shifts or lessons that you um, learned from that first marriage that you now have taken into and, you know, grown deeper in this uh, really long-term commitment um, with Dixon? Great question. And maybe question. Dixon, you've got some things to add to this as well. Yes. Yeah. Great question. Great question. So, my first marriage was 20 years. I married a good man, the one my mother thought was a good idea. And there's the biggest hint to the <laughs> main thing I learned is after I divorced a good man, which my mother was furious at me for doing, 
how could you leave a good man who doesn't cheat on you, who doesn't, he's not alcoholic, he doesn't gamble away the money, he brings home, a, you know, blah, 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 and everything. Right. What, she wasn't, what she wasn't asking is, are you happy? Right. I was not happy and I didn't want to live with good enough. I really, I wanted a great marriage. I, and so second round, the thing that I learned from the first one is to get in touch with myself. What is it that I want? What am I looking for? What, um, what matters to me? Not what my mother or my church or anybody else told me I should be looking for, but what, what really is unique to me. And that I've definitely found in Dixon and, and he's not even my type. You know? just, <laughs> so learning to listen to my internal self is the main thing that I learned. Right. I love that. And so Dixon, what, what would you have to say about that? Did you, um, did you resonate as, as a Panther? Does that, uh, is that something that, um, you know, is, is your, your being, and then you are, you kind of pull from some of the other ones you mentioned about, you know, getting some uh, gorilla uh, attributes and things. Um, how does this work for you? Well, I, I, I am a Panther as, as you mentioned, and I have pulled from others, especially the gorillas, but just a history, my kind of a history is, I came from kind of a rough background and a lot of uh, emotional abuse in my home and went into the army. And when I got out of the army, uh, started to really struggle, struggle with uh, my image, my self image. And, and um, I, I uh, got involved in drugs and alcohol and ended up in a drug rehab program where I lived for seven years. And uh, during that time, I became one of the I became the vice president of that program and in the process worked in Nevada state prison with inmates and worked with a lot of people in the program itself. But when I got, when I left that program, I still really wasn't, I really wasn't settled and I was going through kind of a serial, serial relationship thing, serial dating thing where I was dating a lot of different women. And, uh, and I, I, I would say my behavior would be uh, behavior that would be looked down upon today with with women and uh um i went to a dance one night and uh this was after a series of these relationships and i was kind of burned out and all that and and i met this redhead who asked me to dance and uh we we began uh, a talking relationship and, and we we dated for a while and and uh, uh we got married and angeline what i would say about probably the biggest thing in my life uh, that has that has helped me is Angeline created a safe place for me where I could actually be myself and where I could learn to trust and that was really that's the most important thing that I have learned in all of this was that when you're with a partner building trust creating safety for each other is really a deeply uh, important aspect yeah, absolutely. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. And I think it's so important to be intentional. And this is really intentional dating and, you know, intentional how, you know, the respect between each other and what that actually looks like. Um, so Angeline, I'd love to ask you about, you know, um, how is it that you are like consciously creating your life? I mean, you know, there's so many things where people live by default and being intentional about what it is that you're, you're up to. Um, what, what are some of the things that you do that allow you to be more intentional? Good question. Um, and I'll go back to, you asked me about the name of the book. Yes. So it's about gorillas, but still it's kind of a kinky name. And one of the ways that I'm intentional is I really am a spiritual person. I do my best to stay in touch with what I consider as God, my father in heaven. Uh, it could be your higher power, it could be universe, whatever, whatever you think. But I do my best to stay in touch and to listen. And, and in my prayers, I'll say, please help me have an open heart and open mind so that I can hear, so that I can receive the message, so that I can feel the guidance to go different directions. When the title of that book, direct download as far as I'm concerned. And my publisher did not like the title. She said, this doesn't tell what it's about. People are going to think it's, you know, uh, you're supposed to go out to the jungles and help take care of the gorillas or whatever. And, <laughs> and I said, I don't care. That's the title I was given. That's the one I want to use. It's, it's worked beautifully for us because it is so unique, so different, so unusual. But so my, I, I got really clear when I, after my divorce, I got really clear about what my highest values are. Previously, I thought my highest values were 
the things in my religion. And now I understand number one for me is family connection. One of the things that made me interested in Dixon and to see that there was some gorilla in him is that the guys that I was dating, and I did a lot of dating, I actually had a contest with my two teenage daughters to see who could date the most in a, a period of time, and I won. <laughs> and I was trying to get my one daughter who's kind of shy to get out there more. That was the point of that. Right. But, but anyway, Dixon told me after he came over one night, he had knocked on the door. I knew it was him on the door and I just called out, come in. And he came in and I and all three of my kids were all cuddled up on our sofa together watching TV. And he told me later, he said, I looked at you and I thought, I want to be part of that. The other guys I was dating would all say to me, you've got great kids. And when they're gone, and in my head, I'd think my kids will never be gone. <laughs> I hear you. So family connections, being valuing relationships is a gorilla quality. And so he was exhibiting, even though he was this totally sleek, got to be cool, got to be suave and debonair. Mr. Mr. Oh, Panther. Mr. Panther, even though he, that's, <laughs> that's what his primary is he definitely already had some of those gorilla qualities of valuing relationships. So I, I, I do my best to connect with my personal values, family, personal growth. And my third one is the aesthetic beauty, which is why I appreciate your set and your website so much. It's just gorgeous. Oh, thank but, you. But Dixon also values those same things. We've come to see he would not have named those as his previously, but we've come to know over time, this man is a great choice for me. And I'm a great choice for him. We provide what each other wants. I felt guided by God to- We him. really have a good thing going on us. We do. We, we really do. <laughs> I love that. And you know, it's important for our listeners because you know, there's so much happening in the world where there's a lot of um, outside noise and static that's going on. And I think it's important as part of the conversation is that we have to trust our inner knowing. And you know, when we get those, you know, those whispers from God and you know, we really hear what is true for us, there can be, whether it's your publisher or your family or other people that are saying, well, hey, that's not in alignment with this, or this isn't, you know, you hear all these outside things, but when you know what you know, and that, that is really a, a level of self-awareness that we all want to attain, that we really yes. want to look at because no one knows what is best for you than you and giving yourself that internal knowingness and to, you know, I believe that we all are, um, you know, guided from a power above. I believe in God as well. And I think that, you know, uh, especially now, I mean, our country was based on, you know, in God we trust. And part of that trust is trusting ourselves and to listen to those and check it in with our, our own internal system. So I think that's really important for our listeners to really look at, you know, where are you deriving who it is that you're dating? How is it you're making your decisions in your life? What are those things looking like? And are you checking in with yourself and what you know as your higher power? Because when you do that, then it's in alignment with you and not it's just wishy-washy on what, what you think, you know, your mother wants you to date or what, you know, looks good on paper or all these other things that are out there. So I just, I really appreciate that, that introspection um, for people to really start trusting themselves again. And I think we don't necessarily see that. And because there's so much uncertainty and fear that also comes into play. And so I love to talk about, you know, even though there's fear in the space, we want to see how can we be more fierce. And yeah, so like <laughs> I'd love to ask you a little bit about how is it that you move through fear or when you're feeling uncertain, um, how is it that you can step into um, being more fierce and certain about what you're doing in your life? Good question. Again, you've got great questions. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, the first thing is that I do feel that I have a purpose, a mission, and that uh, that mission isn't just for me to sacrifice myself, but that as I fulfill that mission, it increases my happiness and my joy. And so I am a believer in doing my best to follow uh, the guidance that I get to fulfill that mission. And Dixon and I together now believe that our mission is to help heal as many relationships as possible. And if we can do that, if, we, if 
if children leave the home in the morning from a family that has been arguing and, and saying nasty things to each other and they go to school, no wonder they're going to misbehave in school and create bullying and, and it spreads to the community and eventually it spreads to the world. And if we could go the other direction and get more happiness, more satisfaction, more joy, more feeling of I am loved in the home, and that is a learnable, trainable skill. They're, they're literally, and, and we don't get taught. If we can do that, then we have happier children, things are better at school, things are better in the community. We can heal the world, but it starts with that primary relationship. And we could say that the primary relationship is the one with yourself. And you know, there's all this stuff about learn to love yourself. And when I was young, I remember people would say, well, just be yourself. And I would think, well, I, I, I have no idea what you're yeah. talking about. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means, but I'm, I'm learning now, <laughs> we're in our seventies, I'm learning how to be truly connected with, at peace with, and intentional about my life. And so when fear comes up, I say to myself, okay, <sighs> what is it that's scaring me? Is it actually something real? Like, like getting scared to be on this interview today. Okay. That's just my own fears. That's not, there's nothing to actually be afraid of. Um, and then I say my little prayers. I go to my husband. I say, okay, talk to me if I'm scared, you know, if I'm worried, if I'm uh, creating anxiety for myself. So he's my best backup and support for each other. But it's, it's knowing, I mean, truly knowing where I need to go. And so I, I believe if I'm going and doing what I need to be and should be, and I, I don't mean about should the world tells me, but should in connection with myself, if, if I'm doing that, it's going to work out. It's going to be okay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and that's in alignment with, you know, one of my passions is really connecting with uh, our audience uh, with positive disruptors. And I love what you guys are up to because it's important to how are we shifting things? How are we looking at things in a different way? And to do that with a positive focus. I mean, there's so much out there that can, you know, really almost make you feel yucky after you look at all the things that are happening. And yes, there needs to be awareness and we really need to make some shifts and changes in the world. But at the end of the day, we have to feel empowered and feel positive so that we can actually do something about those things. So I love uh, your mission about what you're up to and uh, this whole thing about, you know, improving the world one relationship at a time. I'd love for you to speak a little bit more into that because, you know, it's kind of almost like that starfish about, you know, hey, I saved this one starfish by throwing it back into the ocean. You know, when we look at relationships in that way, uh, can you talk a little bit how by really, uh, saving and supporting and elevating just one relationship, how that actually ripples into the world. Okay. Um, so when someone comes to me, okay, so a, a young woman contacted me and she said, can you help my brother? And I said, well, it depends on if he wants to be helped. <laughs> and, <laughs> And so then he contacted me, he said, yes, my sister said you could help me in. So here is a tall, dark, handsome Italian, sexy, attractive, married three times, disastrously, every single time he left the marriage feeling lower than a snake's belly, just feeling he had no value. Um, when when he carries that pain out into the world, he interacts with the people around him in um, ways that are not supportive to help other people be happier. I could use Dixon for an example too. When he was going through all those women, uh, he didn't mention that he was married for five years, but uh, before and after his marriage and then all these women that he dated, he was not spreading happiness and joy and support and, and women's belief in themselves and stuff. He was functioning from his own lack, his own feeling of less than, his own feeling of pain, his own uh, emptiness inside. And so this, this young man that I was working with, I worked with him, helped him realize what he was looking for, same kind of pattern that I do with um, uh, women. And what he thought he was looking for and what he had married three times was cover girl models. I mean, they were gorgeous women. 
and he would then do everything for them that he could because he didn't feel good about himself. So he's always trying to uh, do whatever she wants. I'll do this, I'll do that. And giving up any boundaries, any self-value to the point that by the time they had no respect for him and he'd get a divorce, he'd feel like nobody else is ever gonna love me. And, mm -hmm. and this pattern went on and on. Well, when we did a paradigm shift for him, he realized what he actually wanted was what I would call a nurturing woman. Rather than a glamour girl, he wanted a nurturing woman. So I helped him understand how to recognize that. And he's with a wonderful woman now who he thought he never wanted children. She was a single mom and he fell uh, in love with this idea of being a father to this daughter too. So it's changed the way he now interacts in the world, which creates a ripple effect. He's happier. This woman he's with is happier. The little girl that they have is happier. That spreads that energy out to everybody. Dixon, now that he's in a satisfying, uh, fulfilling relationship, he spreads that. He's a, a grandfather to our kids across the street, our, our grandkids across the street. He's doing coaching. He's helping other men. He's working with me, working with other women. It spreads that energy. It's a healing energy. You mentioned the news. You watch the news. The news, in my opinion, is a hurting energy. It creates anxiety. It creates fear. It creates distrust. It doesn't help build. And, and so by healing people, one at a time, I mean, they're, we're actually now working with groups, like with our challenge we have coming up. Uh, the more the people that we can heal or help them self heal, the happier they are and it spreads that energy in the world. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely agree on that. And, you know, there is that, that REPL effect of how do we show up? Like each day we get to choose how we're going to show up and to make those shifts so that we can show up more you know, powerfully, more positively, and really have that, that great influence. And, um, you know, speaking of influence, one of the fun things I like asking um, my guests is I believe that your environments have influence on you. They affect you and how you feel in your bedroom versus your kitchen versus your office are all different feelings. So what is your favorite room in your home and why? So I took your quiz about that, which I thought was very, very interesting, by the way, and I'd recommend to all your listeners, they should take that quiz so that they become more aware. Now, we are sitting in my office, <clears throat> and Dixon has his own office in, in our house in another area, and in my office, I have a tiger print chair behind us because I love animal prints. I mean, I'm working with animals, so I, li I like that. Uh, this painting here on the wall a friend of mine painted that. It is a Navajo woman, a, a rug weaver. I come from Southern Arizona. These are my people. I, I grew up around the Navajos. Um, you can't see it, but I have a, another picture on another wall here that is a painting of a Tibetan uh, woman who supposedly, it, it's a, uh, an imaginary uh, painting because we don't know what she looked like, of a woman named Yeshi Shogyal who is a supposedly the only person, not to mention the only woman to have received all of Buddha's teachings. So I, I have that, I have right behind me, right there is a book. And it's a book that my oldest daughter helped me make of a trip that my two daughters and I and my 16 year old granddaughter at the time spent two weeks in Paris. It's pictures about all of our travels in Paris. So I have a rent and these are on the wall here are our certificates for our training and the, the master's programs that we have in coaching and in uh, being able to work with people. So I have around me things that support me. I have uh, specifically female pictures because it's my space. And when I look around at all these things have meaning and value to me and they speak to me, you probably know feng shui talks about. Uh, being sure that the things around you speak positively to you. Yeah. My office, when I walk in it, I feel happy. I feel supported. I feel strong. I feel capable. My office speaks to me. Yeah, I love this. I mean, it's, just, it's so important to create these uh, environments that actually have the experience that you want to have and how powerful to have this as your experience in your work environment uh, that you can draw upon that energy and to really show up more powerfully for 
for your people. And uh, I mean, we could be talking uh, all afternoon about this. I, the time always goes by so quickly. And I know that uh, our listeners are going to want to stay in contact with you. Uh, and we'll have all the, the um, links and things in the show notes. Uh, but uh, real quickly, uh, how is it that they can do that? So the most fun thing to do is to take uh, one of the Gorilla quizzes. If you go to our website, which is relationshipmaster.com, and then on the menu bar, click on quizzes. There's four quizzes in there. They're all free. They're all fun. They will all give you insights. Um, women, I would recommend you take the ideal manimal quiz, which will help them identify what it is they really look for, and then take the Gorilla quiz, which will tell women the manimal type of any man in their life. So the ideal manimal is about a fantasy man, your dream man. The gorilla quiz is about a real man. You can take about your father, your brother, your ex, anybody. Men can then take the guy's gorilla quiz about themselves to self-identify, which is really fun if you're in a relationship because women take it and they say, okay, I see that you're primarily rhino and you've got a little bit of shark and oh yeah, this much uh, gorilla and Oh, you've got some of this panda down here too. He takes the quiz about himself and he says, oh, I see myself this way. Now the two of them have an opportunity to talk about, oh, why do you see that as your strong? Why this? So that it helps you go deeper into understanding him. And then she has, gets a better understanding of why she sees him that way. Um, so it, it, it deepens their relationship. And then the fourth quiz on there is the emotional maturity quiz which uh, guys can take about themselves or women can take about uh, different men in their life. So they're fun and they're free. And that's at relationshipmaster.com. When you take one of those quizzes, it also enables you to then receive um, an ebook, a downloadable ebook, which is the first chapter of our book. It's the chapter all about the 12 manimal types. So that's, that's a fun thing for them to be able to do. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. And I so appreciate the work that you both are doing in the world. And I just want to thank you so much for being here on the show. Our pleasure, Diane. Yes, thank you. Thank you <laughs> for your invitation. Thank you. Uh, my pleasure as well. And to our listeners, thank you so much. You know, your time is such a valuable resource and we so appreciate you being here with us, uh, being part of this community. We'd love for you to, uh, you know, any comments or questions that you have for uh, either one of us, make sure you tag us so that we can uh, answer any of those questions that you have. Uh, you'll have all the information in the show notes and, uh, you know, this is a community and, and positivity is such an important thing to get out in the world. So please share this, you know, subscribe, uh, put any of your reviews in there. We always love to hear your feedback. And that is how more positivity gets out into the world and you get to be part of it. And until we connect again, live your spa life. Bye for now. Bye-bye.